Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Classes, you have studied the six degree of freedoms equations of motion. Today, we will try to find the trajectory of the aircraft with the help of these equations. Before we proceed to find the trajectory, we must have to be familiar with the all forces and moments acting on the aircraft. However, you already know. But before proceeding, let us take a quick review of these forces and moments. You know all the dimensions and all the inertial criteria of all the inertial properties of the aircraft and you know all the aerodynamic coefficients. Using these coefficients and the inertial property, you can find all the forces and moments. You know all the dimensions of the aircraft, you know dimensions means you know the C bar, you know the wing span, you know the area of the aircraft and you are familiar with the inertial properties means you know the mass, inertial components that is I x x, I y y, I z z and the cross products I x y i y z and i x z and you already know all the aerodynamic characteristics of the aircraft means you know the all the aerodynamic coefficients aerodynamic coefficients the c l naught c l alpha c l alpha dot C L Q, C L delta E, C L delta F. If you have all these aerodynamic coefficients, you can find the lift acting upon the aircraft because using these coefficients, you can find the C L and C L is given by C L naught plus C L alpha into alpha. C L alpha dot into alpha dot C bar by 2 B plus C L Q into Q C by 2 B plus C L delta E into delta E plus C L delta F into delta F. So, you can using these coefficients you can find C L and once you have the C L, you can find the lift acting on the aircraft by half rho b square as C L. Similarly, you have all the drag coefficients, you know the C D naught, C D alpha, C D alpha dot, C D q. C D delta F, C D delta A, C D delta R and all other remaining coefficients and from there you can find the C D and once you know the C D you can find the drag and the, you can find that Y forces also acting on the aircraft. Once you have all the forces, you can decompose them into body frame X, Y and Z axis. How you do this? You have the angle of attack and side slip angle. If the velocity component of the aircraft in the body frame are the u, v and w, the angle of attack alpha will be tan inverse w by u and beta will be 
tan inverse V by V by u. So, now if you have the alpha and beta and all the forces lift force, drag force and y force, then using these two angles you can find the f aerodynamic x, f aerodynamic y and f aerodynamic z acting in the body axis of the aircraft. Similarly, if you have all the moment coefficients C L naught, C L beta, C L beta dot, C L p, C L r, C L delta a, C L delta r, you can find the C L. And once you have the C L, you can find the rolling moment L is given by half rho v square s C L into C bar. Similarly, you can find the pitching moment and yawing moment also. Now, you have all the aerodynamic forces and moments acting on the aircraft. Now, the task is to find all other forces and moments acting on the aircraft. What are the other forces? The thrust force and the force due to gravity. In case of uh, propeller aircraft, the force basically depends upon the throttle and the velocity of the aircraft and if you can model it, you can find it. There are a lot of methods given in the books or you can prepare a lookup table for the different velocities and the different throttle levels and then you can pick a value of the thrust from there for your, for your particular aircraft, for your particular throttle level and velocity. And the third force is the gravity force. If you know the orientation of the aircraft, the psi, theta and phi, you can find the all three gravity forces. You will uh, see it later. So, finally, you have all the three aerodynamic forces. F aerodynamic x, F aerodynamic y and F aerodynamic z and the thrust forces, you can decompose it in the x, y and z direction. You know the orientation and mass, so using the g x, g y and g z, the gravity components in the x, y and z direction, you can calculate the gravitational force acting on the aircraft in all three axes. Now, you will be using these forces and the equations of motions that we have derived in the previous classes and we will see how we can find the trajectory of the aircraft. In previous classes, we have derived 6 degree of freedom equations of motion and we have two set of equations, each set three equations. The first is the conservation of linear momentum equation and the second set conservation of angular momentum equations and they were, if you talk about the conservation of linear momentum equations, you can write m u dot plus Q w minus r v m g x the gravitational force f aerodynamics in x direction and thrust force in x direction. The second equation 
m v dot plus u r minus p w the gravity force in y direction plus aerodynamic force in y direction m plus thrust force in, force in y direction. And the third equation m w dot thrust force in z direction. And the second set of equation the conservation of angular momentum equations and these were p dot i x x minus r dot i x z minus p q i x z plus r q i z z minus i y y. The rolling moment due to the aerodynamic force and rolling moment due to the thrust L A plus L T. The second equation q dot i y y plus p r i x x minus i z z plus p square minus r square i x z is equal to aerodynamic force and thrust. And the third the yawing moment due to the aerodynamic forces and thrust. So, we had derived this six set of equations. We have the information of aerodynamic forces. all three aerodynamic forces, we know the thrust forces and we know all the gravity components and we have the initial condition of the aircraft, then using this set of equations we can find the three velocity components u v n. The solution of this these equations will give us the three velocity components u v n w. You can solve this set of equations using any numerical method. There are a lot of tools, uh, you can find some solver in the MATLAB also or uh, I personally like to solve these kind of equations with the help of runge kutta methods, because these equations are coupled. If you see the u dot is here and u is utilized here, similarly with the w and v also and this set of equations also. So, you can solve using any numerical method. and Finally, you will get the u v w and from here solving this set of equations you will get the p q and r. Now, the question is how we can find the trajectory of the aircraft. We have three velocity components and these velocity components are in body frame of the aircraft and if you want to determine the trajectory of the aircraft, 
we will require these velocity components in the inertial frame, because whenever we talk about the trajectory, obviously we are talking in terms of the inertial frame. So, we need any methodology to convert these velocity components, this body axis velocity components into the inertial frame. And if you remember, we had studied the Euler angles, Euler rotation with the set of those equations, we can convert. Let us see uh, a quick review of the Euler angles. Suppose, this is our inner cell frame. These are three axes x, y and z and we have to, this is in the inner cell frame. Uh, if I write it x 1, y 1 and z 1 and we have one another frame, this is our aircraft body frame. So, how we can transform our equation from this frame to this frame or this frame to this frame. We can reach from one frame to another frame with the help of three rotations and there are many type of rotations used, but in the Euler we use this sequence of the rotation 3, 2, 1. First we rotate our frame about the z axis, then the new y axis which we got after the rotation in the z axis and in the lastly we rotate our frame about the new x axis which got after the second rotation. Let us see it. Suppose I have top view of my aircraft. This is the positive y, this is the x and if you rotate it like this, this will, this is the psi, this you call the psi rotation. Initially, we were in the inertial frame and suppose this was our x 1 and this is the y 1, we are representing inertial frame with the x 1 and y 1 and finally, we are trying to come into the body frame and that will be our x, y and z. In intermediate, we have got this frame called x 2 and y 2 and for this rotation, the z will remain common, z 1 is equivalent to z 2 because we are rotating about this z axis only. We can write in matrix form this rotation, suppose our velocity components in inertial frame are u 1, v 1 and w 1 and after the psi rotation, it becomes sorry, it becomes u 2, v 2 and w 2. This u 2, v 2, w 2 is an intermediate frame and this we got after the rotation psi. We can write this matrix cos psi minus sin psi 0 sin psi cos psi 0, 0, 0, 1 and the second rotation we rotate about the new y axis and using that rotation you can get 
u2 v2 w2 u3 v3 n w3 this is in the second intermediate frame and for this you get the matrix this we get due to the theta rotation cos theta 0 sin theta 0 1 0 and minus sin theta 0 and cos theta. And finally, the third rotation in this rotation we had z 1 and z 2 same in this rotation we have y 2 and y 3 same because we are rotating about this y 2 and this after the rotation also it will remain same in third rotation we can get u 3 v 3 and w 3 and finally, we reach in body frame and this is u v n w. So, after these three rotations finally, we have reached from this inertial frame to the body frame and in this case x 3 is nothing but the x because we are rotating about this x 3. If you see this rotation, suppose this was my aircraft, this is x and this is z, actually this is, this is x 2 and this is z 2 this after the theta rotation we will get x 3 n z 3 the y 2 and y 3 will remain same. In this third rotation you will get the matrix 1 0 0 0 cos phi minus sin phi 0 sin phi n cos phi. In third rotation, we have front view of the aircraft. If this is my front view, then suppose this is our y 3 and this is z 3. For this rotation for the positive phi, the right wing down is the positive phi. So, right wing down means if this is my front view, it will be like, it will become like this and this is my final y and this is z and this angle is phi. So, using these three rotations, we can convert our frame from inertial frame to the body frame or body frame to inertial frame. If we can combine all these rotations in one equation, we will get an inertial frame all three velocity components. And this can be given by the multiplication of three matrices. This u v w is in body frame, and by multiplying this matrix, we are able to get u and v on w one. This is in our inertial frame, and this is our desire because we want to find the trajectory. You can write u one v one w one x 
x1 dot, y1 dot and z1 dot. So, from here we can find the x1, y1 and z1 and this will ultimately give us the trajectory of the aircraft in the inertial frame. From this three set of equations, we already have got the u v w, this u v w, but to find the u 1 v 1 w 1, we require psi theta and phi also. And from where we will find this? So, to get this, we will do a small manipulation. The matrix that we had derived to convert the body frame into inertial frame or inertial frame to the body frame, this we call the flight path equations. So, now our target is to find the three other angles psi, theta and phi. And what information we already have? We know the p q r. So, we have to find the psi, theta, phi from the p q r, because this is the rotation. And if you have the rotation and if you know the initial condition of rotation, obviously we can find the orientation and that we will try to find here. If we have the angular velocity of the aircraft, you can write it this p q r and are the rotations, the angular speeds in the body frame of the aircraft. So, we can write p i plus q j plus r k. And if you know the rate of Euler rotations, we can write it the, the angular speed of the aircraft, the psi dot plus theta dot plus phi dot. Somehow, if I am able to determine the expression for for this in terms of i, j and k and if I compare with this equation, I will get the psi dot, theta dot and phi dot in terms of p, q and r. How we can do this? The three rotations that we performed to determine the Euler angle psi, theta and phi, the first was the psi and this was about the z axis. And for this, suppose we transform our coordinate system from body axis and in the body axis we had the unit vectors i 1, j 1 and k 1 and from here we got the i 2, j 2 and k 2 and the rotation that we performed was the psi. Here the k 1 will be equal to the k 2 because we are doing this rotation about the z axis. So, k 1 is equal to k 2 and I can write the psi dot vector is equal to psi dot k 1 and this is equal to psi dot k 2. Similarly, when we did the second rotation that was from i 2, g 2 and k 2 to i 3, g 3 and k 3. For this, we got from this rotation, we got the theta angle and this we are doing about the y axis means this j 2 and the j 3 are the same and we can write the theta dot vector is equal to 
theta dot j 2 or theta dot j 3. In the third rotation that was the phi that we performed about the x axis that was the x 3 or i 3 and we got from we reached from i 3 j 3 and k 3 the rotation was phi and we reached in the this body frame that was the i j and k. This rotation we are performing about the this x 3 axis or i 3. So, i 3 will be i and we can write this phi dot vector is equal to phi dot i 3 and this is equal to phi dot i and we can write the omega using these equations omega is equal to psi dot k 2 plus theta dot j 3 plus phi dot i. Why I am using this and this only? Because our ultimate aim is to reach in i j and k frame in this body frame and if I start from here, if I take this psi k 1, then I will have to transform my frame 3 times the first from k 1 to k 2 and then k 2 to k 3 and then k 3 to k and this will take the 3 rotations. If I start from k 2 direct then I can reach into the i j k frame only after the 2 rotations. Similarly, if I start from theta dot j 3 I will require only one rotation and I will reach into the i j k frame. If I start from here I will require 2 rotations that is why I am picking this one and this is already in i form no requirement of any rotation. Now, how we can find this k 2 in terms of i 3 j 3 and k 3. If you remember our second rotation that was the theta and we were getting the i 2 j 2 and k 2 and the rotation matrix was suppose this is i 3 j 3 n this was the second rotation that is the theta and this was given by cos theta 0 sin theta 0 1 0 minus sin theta 0 cos theta. So, from here I can get k 2 in terms of i 3 j 3 and k 3 and I can write k 3 is equal to sorry k 2 is equal to this k 2 minus sin theta i 3 plus cos theta k 3. And I have to find this this i 3 is already I know is i. So, I can eliminate it 
and I can write it I. Now, I am left with K 3 and for this, I can use the third rotation and that was I 3, J 3 and K 3 and the matrix we had 1 0 0 and here we had I J and K. The matrix was 0 cos phi minus sin phi 0 sin phi and cos phi and from here I can get k 3 in terms of i j k and k 3 is sin phi j plus cos phi k. And if I substitute it here, I will get k 2 as this is unit vector sin minus sin theta i plus cos theta and k 3 is sin phi j plus cos phi k. So, now I have k 2 in terms of i j and k. So, my this task is complete and I have to find j 3 also in the terms of i j and k and from here I can write g 3 is equal to cos phi j minus sin phi k cos phi j minus sin phi k. Now, we do not require these equations. So, finally, I have omega psi dot and k 2 is what? minus sin theta i plus cos theta sin phi j plus cos theta cos phi k plus theta dot j 3 and this I can write cos phi j minus sin phi k. And this is already we have plus phi dot i. And now, if I rearrange these terms and if I compare with this first equation, I will get p is equal to phi dot minus sin theta psi dot q is equal to cos phi theta dot plus cos theta sin phi psi dot and r is equal to 
cos theta cos phi psi dot minus sin phi sin phi theta dot and if I write it in a matrix form I can write the P Q R is equal to one zero minus sin theta zero cos phi cos theta sin phi and 0 minus sin phi cos theta cos phi. And this in multiplication with I dot theta dot and psi dot and this set of equation we call the kinematic equation. Once we have this psi theta and phi, we know the orientation of the aircraft. If you remember we had derived the gravity equations using this psi theta and phi and those equations we are given by let me rewrite here g x is equal to minus g sin theta g y is equal to g cos theta sin phi and g z is equal to g cos theta cos phi. Now, we have the gravity components, you can solve this set of equations in iterations in using some numerical method and if you are solving it for a small time delta t, whatever you get after this suppose it is 0.001 second or 0 0.01 second is usually we keep it very small. Once you solve it for a delta t time, you will get the new values of these forces, this u v w and p q r means this forces and this of course, you will get l m n l also, this new moment values and if you keep iterating for the next iteration, whatever you have got the new values that will work as the initial condition and you will get the values after 2 delta t and similarly, if you keep iterating, you will get a continuous path of the aircraft that is our trajectory. We have developed a graphical user interface for the 6 degree of freedom simulation. In this, here you can feed all the aerodynamic coefficients associated with the longitudinal motion the lift coefficients, drag coefficients and the pitching moment coefficients. In this window all the aerodynamic coefficients associated with the lateral and directional motion of the aircraft, coefficient for the y-force, all the rolling coefficients and yawing coefficients. Here parameters associated with the dimensions of the aircraft and the, all the inertial properties all the initial state of the aircraft and in this window if there is any wind you can put here altitude is divided in different slots in each slot whatever the component of the velocity is can be given here so in in a cell frame the number of elements in all the boxes will be same the start time of the wind 
the stop time of the wind. This window has nothing to do with the simulation, but you can get a rough approximation for the trim. Suppose I want to fly at 100 meter altitude with 15 meter per second. For this, my elevator input is this much, and the throttle is required is this. This is the input window. I can give the inputs of, for the different control surfaces. Suppose uh, I want to trim at 100 meter altitude with 15 meter per second. This for this my elevator input is this much. So if I give if I want to give more inputs, I can add here. Uh, like if I give elevator input starting from 50 for 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. And suppose 5 degrees. So similarly, I can add as many inputs I want to give. And similarly for, for the aileron rudder and flaps also. And this is my throttle. And this is the simulation parameter. For the duration, I want to simulate and the step size for the internal calculations. And here is the engine parameters. I can select the type of engine. I execute it. Aerodynamic coefficients that we entered here, you can find them analytically. For this, you can refer the book Aircraft Dynamics by Marcelo R. Napolitano or aircraft design by Daniel Rammer. You have any other book, you can follow that. You can calculate them with CFD simulation also. If you want to get more accurate values, you can perform a wind tunnel test, then you can calculate all the aerodynamic coefficients. Now, if I want to see the angle of attack, it will be plotted here. Pitching angle, you want to see this path in 3D space the velocity and whatever I will select here they will appear the first four will appear here suppose I want a tailwind of 2 meter per second I am flying at uh, approximately 100 meter altitude so if I add till 100 meters a wind of two, I have added from 10 to 1 kilometer altitude 2 meter per second wind and I am sure that my aircraft is not going beyond those altitudes starting from 20 seconds till 45 seconds and now if I execute it Here you can see when there is wind, the angle of attack has changed. Again, when wind is not, then again there is a change. There is a transition actually. The altitude is losing, then again it's gaining when the wind is not there. Because this is tailwind, that's why it's losing its altitude. Here are some tools you can use them. Suppose I want to see this area much closer, I can zoom it. We have put this software on the Flight Laboratory IT Kanpur website. It's open source. You can download. If you have any idea, you can add into this. If you have any doubt, you can ask me. My mail ID is vijayd at iitk.ac.in. You can ask the questions on the forum also. We will be happy to answer. Thank you very much.